Hey guys, today's project is a little bit of a fast build with the purpose of testing out some lighting and filming techniques. So I'm putting together the structure pretty quickly. I'm using a Sharpie to just outline some lines on the floor for floor panels and putting these windows in. This one is just going to be a small kitchen. I've gotten inspiration from a few photos I found. Just a really small kind of messy kitchen that was left over in time. That has a bunch of things kind of just laying around. I 3D printed some pieces for the kitchen cabinets and stove and oven and sink and some chairs. I'm painting most of these pretty quickly because again, I'm trying to make this a speed build because I know that if I light it a certain way, you really don't have to have too much detail and you can still get a good photo. So I'm just starting to glue in this main part of the kitchen to give me an idea of how everything else is going to look. And then I started working on the dining table. I just 3D printed some legs for it and used a piece of MDF um, as the tabletop. Now I'm really bad with fabric as always, but I cut this out. I kind of colored it a little bit and then use some isopropyl alcohol and some glue to start trying to shape it. Once that dries, it does hold a little stiffer. While I waited on that, I started dirtying up a bunch of this. Using pigment powders and other weathering techniques, I've found is the quickest and easiest way to make something that is quickly done, doesn't have a lot of detail, just to give it that extra oomph that makes it a little more realistic. This is that dirty down rust paint again, another product that just makes things happen really quickly and still looks amazing. So one thing that I really want to do with this channel going forward in the future is to create a community of artists, miniaturists, people that do all kinds of things that would just love to chat and help each other out. There have been a couple of my Patreon supporters sharing some of their work and talking back and forth with me on the Discord, and I feel like this is a really fun thing for me just as a creator to see other people learning and doing their own projects. Because it's much easier to manage a community like that on Patreon, I am much more active there on the Discord. And for Patreon, generally, I do post some extra behind the scenes content of what I'm doing. And to be honest, it's one of the best ways to support me and the channel going forward to continue to be able to make these projects and share them with you. So if you are able and would really like the opportunity to support this channel and get to know me better, go check out my Patreon page and sign up. Everyone that supported me on Patreon so far has been awesome and I really can't thank you enough for the support. So as I continue here, I wanted to start talking about lighting and scale for these miniatures. Now traditionally, miniatures that were made for movies or TV were pretty large miniatures, they call them bigatures. And that's because of a few reasons. The smaller the scale of the miniature, the closer you have to get with the camera. The closer the camera is to a subject, the less of the scene is in focus. If you take a photo of mountains far away, they're all going to be in focus, and so is the moon behind them. But if you take a photo of a flower that's only a few inches away from the camera, everything in the background is going to be very soft and out of focus. Our brains know this, and so when you film miniatures with a macro lens, there are only so many things you can do to get more of a range of focus in your shot and when it is so shallow, it makes it look like a miniature and your brain doesn't think it's real. So because I don't plan on making my miniatures nine feet tall, but I still enjoy trying to make them look realistic, I have to try my best to make them have the largest range of focus possible. For photos, I can do something called focus stacking, but for video, that isn't possible. Essentially, the only option that I have is to stop the aperture of my camera down all the way. The smaller the aperture, the more of the scene is in focus. The problem is this requires a ton of light. And along with the fact that I film a lot of my shots in slow motion to make the fog effects look correct, I need more light than I ever thought. 
So you may have seen me talk about the light that Aperture sent me a while back. Well, they sent me a new one. I actually reached out because I was still having a lot of issues with getting enough light. And so they sent me this for free and with no obligation to, to talk about it, but I really like it. This is the 300D Mark II. It's much more powerful and the build quality is a whole nother level on top of the 200D from the Amaran series that they sent me originally. They also sent me this Fresnel attachment so that I could focus the light. In my mathematical calculations of how much light I might need, I figured I would probably need a light that's even brighter than this 300D, but I figured I could try using both the 200D and the 300D together with Fresnel lens attachments and see what I can end up coming up with shooting through this little window of our diorama. Even with my Sony that has really good low light capability, filming in 120 frames per second at f40 aperture is not going to be easy. So I set it up and did some test shots with only the 300D at first and got kind of a baseline of what I could do. And then I decided to add in that 200D and try and pull this off. I have to say, even if the 300D isn't giving me quite enough light to do this extremely specific thing that I'd like to do here, it has been an awesome light to work with and I really want to thank Aperture so much for sending it to let me try it out. I'll tell you what specific camera settings I was able to get at the end, but first, here are the final shots. So for you camera nerds, here were the settings that I was able to get with these two lights. With my A7S III from Sony, I was at 25,600 ISO. I was at 1 one twentieth of a second shutter speed at 120 frames a second, and f40 on my aperture. This was just enough. I actually had to bring the exposure up a little bit in post. Um, I do use an S-Log3 log format, um, and it was a little dark coming in. And so it's not ideal. Um, this is probably equivalent to a little less powerful light than Aperture 600D. And so if I had the 600D, I could probably do this okay. But to get to where I'd really like at 12,800 ISO and 1 to 40th of a second shutter speed at f40, I likely would need Aperture's new light, the 1200D, which is just a massive beast of a light. and way more expensive, way more powerful, but what I'm trying to do is really unique and not everyone needs this kind of power out of a light. But it was a really fun experiment, um, really cool to know that um, my math kind of works and I do need a light that's probably much more powerful, but it's a little pricey at this point. I think it's around the same price as my whole camera was. Um, and so. You know, that'll be something I'll have to think about going forward in the future. I was able to get this to work, but to really get the settings that I'd like, I might need to upgrade. So anyway, I hope this was interesting. I can't wait to see you guys next time.